Okay, so now we've got friendly face. So we have Edward and Jack, who are friends, they're students. Uh, we got Faraday, who is a cat. <laughs> I love how occupation is just cat. Uh, and Edward's mum, who is unknown. Um, we've got Edward is a careless young man whose mind always seems to be somewhere else. He and his best friend Jack adopt a kitten they name Faraday, who quickly becomes the centre of their world. But this happiness is uh, shorthand... Uh, wait, or shortened one afternoon when Faraday... Uh, races out into a busy street and Jack runs after him without thinking. Both of Edward's best friends are killed in the resulting accident. Drowning in grief, Edward sees a commercial for a new product. Uh, Freddy, uh, sorry, Fazbear friendly faces and believes it could be the key to coping with the tragedy. Of course, it isn't. Uh, Fazbear Entertainment. Fazbear Entertainment is mentioned in the commercial for Fazbear Friendly Faces. This seems to be the first time the company is seen marketing something ma mass produced outside of a toy to uh, to a, yeah to an older older demographic. I think it says older. Yeah, um, yeah, that's kind of weird. And then the Fazbear Friendly Faces, an innovative new product from Fazbear Entertainment that uses a pet's DNA to craft an identical face, which is then integrated onto an animatronic body to create a loyal pet that will follow the consumer around forever. Epic. That's it. That's it for that one. <laughs> um, yeah. Then we have Sea Bonnies. No art for this. I wish there was art for Sea Bonnies, but okay. We have... Mott and Rory, who are brothers. We have Fritz, who is a goldfish. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we have Dr. Dr. T, or Dr. Tabor, who is a pediatrician, or pediatrician, I don't know how you say that. Um, we have Mott's younger brother, Rory, wins a package of brand new sea bonnies from the Freddy Fazbear's pizza prize counter. Even the dust, uh, sorry, dutiful big brother, Mott helps Rory set up the uh, the disgusting creatures, uh, the colony of disgusting creatures. But things quickly take a strange turn. The sea bonnies first attack Rory's goldfish Fritz, and then they seemingly become the fish. Um, worried for his brother's safety, Mott flushes the sea bonnies down the toilet. But for but far from ending the nightmare, it seems Mott has simply given the monsters a bigger home. I just realised... No, never mind. Oh, there we go. That That's much bigger. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, active. Rory, um... What does that say? Frequence? I don't know. I, I cannot read. It's it's really small writing. I wish they, they did... Like, look at all the space that you've got. I wish they did bigger writing. But, um, okay. Um, yeah, Rory frequently goes to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza where Mott often babysits him. I think, I think that says frequently or whatever. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, biology altering substances again. Uh, as noted, several Fazbear Fright stories are focused around biology, altering substances, including the gumdrop nodes, Fazgoo, and the sea bonnies. Uh, Fritz. Rory's goldfish is named Fritz, which matches, which matches one of the names of the missing children seen on a tombstone of the secret ending of Pizzeria Simulator and the fourth closet novel. They seem unrelated. Okay, there we go. There's kind of confirmation that the fish being named Fritz doesn't really matter with any theories or anything. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and then new leads, astounding live sea bonnies. Um, a prize at the Freddy Fazbear's pizza uh, prize counter that allows users to grow and nurture their own healthy colony of happy sea bonnies. Um, sea bonnies are purplish blue creatures genetically engineered to look like a cross between sea monkeys and rabbits, guaranteed to live for three years. The prize package contains two packets of sea bonny live eggs, one packet of Sea Bonnie water purification powder and one packet of Sea Bonnie super duper growth food. I love how it's called that. Uh, but yeah. Cool. Uh, Together Forever. Pretty good story, this one. Uh, we have Jessica and Brittany. <laughs> and then we've got Mindy and Cindy. 
Uh, all of them are students, and then we got Mr. Thornton, who is a robotics teacher. So, sophomore best friends Jessica and Brittany are annoyed when 8th grade gifted students Cindy and Mindy are invited to join their robotics class. The class is starting up a new assignment, me, uh, reprogramming old animatronics. And Jessica and Brittany are assigned to Rosie Porkchop, a massive springlock animatronic. As Jessica... Uh, delves deeper into the assignment she comes up with a, ge a genius plan to put the eighth graders in their place so then we've got the springlock animatronics as the girls read rosie's operating manual we learn that rosie is a springlock suit capable of being switched into a human interface or suit mode uh, animatronic mechanisms um, in working on the assignment we come across several animatronic mechanisms we've heard before such as servos as well as the problems that can plague different aspects of the ma of the machinery. Uh, and then, of course, robotics class. Again, uh, several Fazbear Frights short stories take place in classrooms, including some specifically dedicated to robotics, the breaking wheel. In these settings, animatronics provide an interesting aven uh, sorry, yeah, avenue to study the field. Um, so, new leads. Animatronics remains. At the start of the assignment, Mr. Thornton wheels out a, a cart full of old animatronic endoskeletons. Uh, does that say aliens? It looks like it says aliens, but I don't think it does. Um, something. <laughs> Dogs, cats, as well as a cow, horse, orangutan, black panther, flamingo, and pig. Uh, and Rosie Porkchop is the pig. Rosie is the only life-size animatronic on Mr. Thornton's cart, a massive pig dressed in a frilly dark pink waitress uniform. The, pink, the pig animatronic is said to be old, with worn felt that can't fully hide its endoskeleton. Uh, Rosie is later revealed to be a Springlock animatronic with a tank capable of fitting two people. <laughs> Foreshadowing. <laughs> Uh, and then we move on to the final book of the series. Um, yeah, yeah, we got we got Prankster up in here. I quite like I quite like Prankster, even though. Um, I mean, what which one do I like in Prank? Oh, Fine Player Two. Yeah, Fine Player Two is one of my favorite stories. I think of the the entire series. It's pretty good. Uh, I've heard it's got mixed opinions though. Um, anyway, so moving on to Prankster. We have Jeremiah, who is a game developer. Hope, who is admin in game development. Uh, Parker, who is a game developer as well. And then an unnamed game master. Yes. Unnamed game master. Uh, Je <laughs> Jeremiah, Hope and Parker work at a small indie game developer that was recently bought out by Fazbear Entertainment. They're developing a Freddy VR game, but company downsizing has delayed the game and forced the three employees to work many late nights. Parker enjoys playing pranks on Jeremiah, some of which cross the line of professionalism. But on Jeremiah's birthday, he's invited to play a sinister game, one that might not be a prank at all. Hmm. <laughs> yes, and by the way, I now understand this story, and thank you so much to Inky. <laughs> Shout out to Inky for kind of explaining it to me. Um, I, I should have a summary video out very soon of all of the stories, so if you don't understand the story at all, then I will explain it in the summary video. Anyway, uh, related elements, secret tapes, I didn't think of this. Jeremiah is working for Fazbear Entertainment on a VR game, and his name is misspelled Jeremy on his birthday cake. I did not notice that. I genuinely didn't know that. Um, that's, a, that's a fascinating detail right there. Could he be the Jeremy re referred to in the secret tapes in Health Wanted? I believe so, yeah. Uh, or at least a parallel, yes. Um, it's kind of weird, though, because it's not Jeremiah who cuts his own face off. It's, it's well, Parker doesn't cut his own face off, but I believe um, I believe Parker's face does got, get, uh, get cut off. Um, so, yeah. FNAF VR, Matt from In The Flesh, is also developing a VR game for Fazbear Entertainment. Cool. Uh, and then new leads, yes, unnamed Game Master. The character's voice is described as sounding deep and electronic, as though it had gone uh, through a filter of some kind. And uh, meta story clues, some of the puzzle clues, such as Stinger Moot and even more frights, may have implications beyond the plot. 
careful readers may want to give these scenes a second look. Interesting. Interesting. I I really want to I really want to find out what that is. <laughs> I really want to find out what that's referring to because I actually have no idea. Like I actually I read this uh I read this part a while ago and we like we've tried some stuff. We've tried decoding it. Uh maybe like it's it's an anagram for something else, but it, it just isn't. Um and I don't really know how else they could come into play maybe i am going to give, give the uh the story a second read because I, I feel like it is something that you would need to read twice to fully understand uh but yeah if anybody has any ideas on this then please let me know because uh this is very interesting it's very interesting detail that they've put into this uh into the ultimate guide okay moving on to the final two stories kids at play uh, we've got uh, Joel D'Agostino, Steve D'Agostino, Mrs. D'Agostino. <laughs> uh, so Joel is a student slash gardener. Steve is the owner of D'Agostino's nursery and garden center. And uh, Mrs. D'Agostino is the author of Knitting Patterns. Uh, yes. And then we've got Caleb, who is a student, and Chief Montgomery, who is a police chief. That's the same name as Montgomery Gator. No, I'm joking. It's kind of sus, though. Um, Joel is set to graduate high school soon, and it, all he wants is to escape his small town to become a musician and model. His parents are often on his case about working harder, taking life more seriously, and being careful, but Joel finds them uptight and overbearing. One night, Joel is driving recklessly and hits a child. Rather than confront his misdeed, Joel decides to uh, to pretend it never happened. In the days that follow, he is haunted by plastic kids at play figures, part of a public safety initiative, as he grapples with what to do next. Uh, fat related elements, fast for entertainment, there are a, f a, a few Freddy's branded things in Joel's world. There are specific Freddy's, uh, a Freddy Fazbear's pizza location ain't mentioned. No, it ain't. <laughs> Uh, and then new leads. Kids at play figures. These three foot tall plastic figures hold a flag that reads kids at play and are meant to alert drivers to children in the area. The figures seem to be part of a Fazbear Entertainment sponsored public safety initiative and Joel finds one in his Faz Crunch cereal box. <laughs> and then Fazbear uh, Faz Crunch cereal. A Freddy Fazbear themed cereal that Joel has been eating for a number of years. Cool. Uh, this this story still kind of confuses me, honestly. <laughs> I don't I don't get I don't get why I don't get why this is a story, but um, okay. It was it was kind of it was funny, but just why? <laughs> and then one of my favorite stories, yes, Fine Player Two. Um, we have Amy who is a student, Mary Jo who is a student, Emmett Tucker. We don't know much about, and we've got Greta, who is also a student. Uh, so, oh my god, what does that say? Bookish? Oh, yeah, bookish, because she reads books. Um, La Biblioteca. Uh, bookish Amy and outspoken Mary Jo have been best friends since they were small at 11 years old. They spend most of the time at the local Freddy Fazbear's Pizza playing in the Hiding Maze, a game that's no longer in active use, but it's still playable. One day, a strange man follows the girls into the maze, and Amy flees the pizzeria. That's the last time she ever sees Mary Jo, but ten years later, Amy is determined to find out what happened to her friend. Um, so, related elements. The missing children's incident. Though Mary Jo's disappearance seems unrelated to the missing children's incident, there seems to be a lot of attention on kidnappings at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza location in the media around this time. That's very true, actually, yeah. I didn't think much about that. Um, they, they kind of assumed that someone would have kidnapped Mary Jo because there were kidnappings at the time and stuff. Missing Children's and whole, that whole thing. Um, so yeah. Freddy Fazbear's Pizza remodeled. The story details the events that preceded the closing of a Freddy's location and later shows how the building was repurposed. Yes. Uh, and the new leads. Freddy's Hiding Maze Hide and Seek game. A, a timed themed maze. Uh, for two players, 
player two chooses one of the one of the cubby holes throughout the maze to hide in. The cubby holes are sealed with hatch like doors. Player one must navigate the rainforest themed maze to find their companion. And then Emmett Tucker, a man arrested for a kidnapping who was seen by Amy and Mary Jo at the Freddy Fazbear's Pizza location they um, they frequented. Is this actually a word, frequented? Does that mean like frequently went to? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this was a very interesting story and I, and I liked it. So, that's all of the stories. But there is a little bit more because of course there are the Stitch Wraith Stingers. Um, so let's kind of just read through this um, quickly because this is also part of the Fazbear Fright section and it's quite interesting because I feel like there's some new leads in here as well. So anyway, um, let's get straight on here. So we've got Everett Larson, who is a detective, Detective Larson. Jake, we don't know. Andrew, we don't know. Dr. Phineas Taggart, who is a scientist and Dr. Talbert, who is a scientist. Um, the Agony... I love that name. That is um, the Afton Amalgamation. For those of you who um, are unaware of what the Agony is, it's, it's the official name for the Afton Amalgamation. We have Rennell, who is a student, and Eleanor, who we don't know about. Uh, we don't know what her deal is. So, description of events. Uh, in Larson's case, Detective Larson is given the unfortunate task of investigating the Stitch Wraith, a strange case that seems part of seri uh, that seems part serial tragedy part urban legend a number of strange incidents are tracked in uh in, in the case file but all are connected by sightings of animatronics and, a t and by a terrifying hooded figure ludging around piles of garbage uh, and then in jake's case years after his death jake finds himself possessing an animatronic endoskeleton which he can control with the help of andrew another lost and angry uh, angry and angry child whose soul is tethered to the animatronic's battery pack. Jake is able to move on if he focuses hard enough on a happy memory, but he can't bear the thought of leaving Andrew behind. Plus, Andrew's anger has inf infected a lot of objects, animatronics, toys, dolls. Someone has to destroy them before they hurt someone. So yeah, I really love the plot of the Stitch Wraith Stingers. So uh, it's, it's top-notch, brilliant. Um, so then we have related elements, and there's there's a whole lot of them. There's a whole lot of related elements. So, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, this franchise, is mentioned several times, and remnants of the pizzeria, such as a foxy animatronic, appear. The missing children's incident. Larson mentions the Freddy murders, and seems aware that William Afton was responsible. The fire, the incident shown in Pizzeria Simulator, and its aftermath are revisited via police evidence. It seems that cassette that that cassette man's plan did not work exactly as intended. We have we have discussed this in another video. Um, go watch that. The puppet Larson pulls the puppet from an evidence locker where evidence from the Pizzeria Simulator fire is housed. So the puppet might be returning a security breach. Wink, wink. Um, Okay, and then we have William Afton. He makes a terrifying return after the events in The Man in Room 1280. Remnant experiments on and technology developed around Remnant take center stage in the Stitch Raid story. The Bull Pit. The famous time-traveling Bull Pit makes it come back in later Stingers. Eleanor, the animatronic Eleanor, makes a reappearance later in the Stitch Raid story. Witness reports. Sarah's case is part of the Stitch Wraith uh, case file that Larson resolves from, uh, oh, sorry, receives, yeah, receives from Chief Monaghan. Millie Fitzsimmons. Millie's fate is revealed in the final stinger. True. Andrew's origins. Andrew's spirit possessed the battery pack that powered Fetch. <laughs> There's so much here. REG, Dr. Taggart has an REG, a random event generator, and practices visualization and inten uh, in yeah, intention setting, um, similar to Greg. The plush trap chaser, the Stitch Wraith reclaims the plush trap chaser. Ella, the Stitch Wraith reclaims the Ella doll. Step closer, Larson gains insight into the remains of the st into the uh, events of the story, and the Stitch Wraith is seen destroying a foxy animatronic. Blackbird, Larson gains insight uh, info, uh, sorry, insight into and affects the outcome of this story. Jake chronicles 
Wait, Connor calls the end of Jake's life. What? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, and then hide and seek. Larson gains insight into the events of this story. Um, a few post-it notes here. Andrew has something interesting to say about his answer and the reason he's tethered to fetch his battery pack. I do remember wanting to get back at someone who hurt me. I think I attached myself to him. I got into this soul, uh, made sure he couldn't move on when he should have died. Exactly. So Andrew was the soul in The Man in Room 1280. That's kind of confirmation right there. I remember I wanted him to suffer the way he made me suffer, but I don't remember what he did. I just know I hung on. No matter what they did to him to try and save him, I wanted him to hurt. Right, yeah. Very ultimate custom nighty there. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> Stitching it together. Nice pun. Lovely pun there. I love it. Um, so the real Jake takes place three years prior to the Stingers. Jake is the stitch wraith focused on cleaning up the haunted remnant containing objects that are causing chaos. Also, Jake was babysat by Greg in Fetch, I believe, when uh, when Jake was three or four, maybe. Uh, speaking of Fetch, Andrew had possessed Fetch via its battery pack. He seems to have been one of Afton's victims. Speaking of Afton, the man in room 1280, um, the burned man described in the story is William Afton, and Andrew may be somewhat responsible for Afton's soul remaining tethered to this world, as he insists he couldn't let him go into the pit. After being stabbed by the agony, Larson experiences strange visions where he seems to travel through time via a bull pit. He tracks down the bull pit and takes 30 samples scraped off the bulls. When the results come in, they show that the same person has been bleeding in the bull pit over 30 years. So that's all cleared up there to be beautiful. Several elements from this story later return in the Stitch Race Stingers. Eleanor, the heart-shaped pendant, and witness reports of Sarah's story. Eleanor's pendant is shown to have unique properties, including the ability to change the appearance of the wearer. Remnant. <laughs> Dr. Taggart and Dr. Talbot are both scientists studying remnant and metal as a conductor of powerful emotion. That's such a key quote right there. If you're going to take anything away from this book, it's that. All about remnant. When the Stitch Wraith is initially created, he kills anyone he touches, causing them to wither away and cry black tears. And uh, yeah, that's that's everything. <laughs> that's all of the Fowl's Breath Wright stories, including the Stitch Wraith Stingers. What do you guys think? Did you enjoy reading through that with me? It was quite a long read, but um, there were some key bits of information there that hopefully I've pointed all of them out. Um, there's definitely something about prankster there <laughs> that I that I want to solve, but I I just don't know. I don't know about it. Um, so yeah, I have a few plans uh, with the ultimate guide as well. Um, first of all, the Fazbear Entertainment Incorporated archives. Um, there's a few recipes here, and I kind of want to make some of these, maybe in a video. So if you guys want to see me, maybe make the Foxy Cove cooler, or maybe the, the official birthday cake pirate plunder bar that sounds oh that sounds so good look at that marshmallow cinnamon salt vanilla esh i can do that i can do some of these if you guys want me to um that would be like a little fun video before security breach maybe anyway uh, and also if you if you guys want me to read any other chapter um tell me in the comments below i will do that um but yeah that was chapter 12 the fazbear frights i hope you enjoyed and i will see you in another video goodbye Bye.